Bill Stubblefield, Maria Lawrenson, and via telephone, the House Majority Leader Eric Householder with us via telephone from a job site in uh, Parts Unknown. Eric, good morning. How are you, sir? Hey, good morning, everyone. It sounds like you got a stellar crew in there this morning. Oh, top notch. That's right. That's and, and right. I got them all sugared up. Paul good. Espinosa good. brought in some goodies, and they were loading up for a third hour of energy uh, during the commercial break. Oh, oh bless his heart. I mean, hey, that's nice when people bring in some treats. Yeah. Eric, the way he was able to recruit this, as you call it, a stellar group, a stellar <laughs> class, is because we knew you were going to be on. Everybody oh, yeah. wants to come on to talk to Eric. And Look we good. wouldn't have been able to do it, Eric, if you were in the first or second hour. We're you're, we're we're on a roll here for the good, third good, hour. Good. I'm glad I could accommodate you guys, and uh, I'm excited to talk about my campaign. So, absolutely. First, if uh, if you have a minute to yeah. the state's finances, we concluded the previous month with another surplus, and uh, just uh, about what seven weeks left in the fiscal year. Yes, uh, about $114 million to the good. So for the year right now, we're up $637 million. And if you remember, that goes back back in early uh, January. I mentioned to the listeners that if we continue on target, uh, seeing about a $60 million surplus, that we would probably reach 700 to $800 million, and I think we're going to get there. And a word about a possible potential state income tax cut, Eric. Yes, and keep in mind, the state income tax uh, with the triggers, I know there seems to be a lot of confusion that we keep talking about this. It, it, it limit the personal income tax bill limited the amount of spending to about five percent. So the legislature can spend up to five percent, and then you take whatever the uh, the rate of inflation is. So if you have five percent spending in the budget for like a pay raise, if you're dealing with four percent inflation. Yeah, that's 9%. So remember, the bill was written up to a 10% cut, so you could get a 1% personal income tax reduction. So it's to make sure that we never become like Kansas. It may be a slower, more progressive, but we we have put ourselves on a path to eliminate the personal income tax. So At least two of the candidates running for governor, Eric, said that they will eliminate the state income tax. They didn't say they'd do it immediately, but they implied that they will do it immediately. Right, which I thought is funny because... Uh, uh, and I'll ask all your listeners, I mean, hey, let's let's do this right now. You ready? So there's two things that you could do if you wanted to eliminate the personal income tax con- uh, completely on today. You would have a choice to make. Do you want to eliminate the entire budget of the DHHR, or you could eliminate the entire budget of the uh, uh, education? So what do, you, what do you think your choices are, or what do you think the chances of, of that ever happening? <laughs> it's because easier. both of them are about $2 billion, and, and we already know what the answer to that is. But uh, mm-hmm. and, and you mentioned Kansas a while ago, Eric. Right. Uh, the ones that do not remember, uh, Kansas did eliminate the income tax with one fell swoop, and it bankrupt the state. They That's took right. three or four years to try to recover. And they didn't eliminate their spending. That was yeah. their biggest mm-hmm. problem That's as well. So, yeah. yeah. Eric, you're in a race for auditor. There are four total Republicans in this primary. You are. are. You are yes, I'm sure you've noticed. <laughs> okay. I'm okay. sure you've noticed. I haven't seen anybody out there. I've been tra- tra- uh, traversing the state for the last nine months, working hard, and I very rarely, har- hardly do I even see anybody out there besides me. I would say that uh, of the races, uh, this has been the quietest race for me here in the Eastern Panhandle. In regards to interviews, I've had no request for interviews from Caleb Hanna or Mark Hunt or Tricia Jackson and uh, Marianne Cl- uh, Robuck Clater, who's the Democrat who's run before, right. uh, doesn't need any publicity right now because she's unopposed on the Democratic primary. Uh, so uh, you tell me in regards to your campaigning for this auditor position, sure. what are you seeing out there and what are you hearing? Well, I can tell you for the last nine months, I've been working really, really hard to become your next state auditor. There's three things that I always tell people when I'm out there. Number one, why I'm running. Number two, what I'm going to do. And number three, why you should vote for me. And uh, I make a point at every one of these Lincoln dinners or Reagan dinners that I go around the room, stick out my hand, and introduce myself and tell them why I'm running. And keep in mind, a lot of these places, you only have about three minutes uh, two to three minutes to make your campaign speech, but uh, you know I think I've got a winning message. I, I, I feel pretty good about it. I have not done any internal polling. I've been uh, everybody's been calling me, asking me, "Hey, have you done any polling?" And no, it's 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 a race that you know you could have thirty to forty to fifty percent undecided. I did not want to spend the ten thousand dollars to do any internal polling for a bunch of uh, undecideds, and I thought, well, it's just like. Uh, 
when your wife is pregnant and you don't have the gender revealed. You just wait. In six more days, we're going to know the real poll of who the next state auditor is going to be. Ron Gregory on West Virginia Statewide released three weeks ago a column that says, Eric Householder's tax liens raise questions in election for auditor. And he goes on to spell out some of the issues. Eric, can you address those now? Sure, absolutely. And I did. I put a uh, letter of good standing out there. And that pretty much shut them up within within less than 12 hours. So all my taxes have been paid. Uh, I put my letter of good standing out there. Um, Ron Gregory's... uh, real good buddies with one of my opponents so i think he's trying to help him out as much that he can so very good so um question for you eric i'm looking at your ad on the front page of the journal yesterday day before where you talk about it's time to end fraud and corruption in west virginia talk a little bit about the fraud and corruption that you've either seen either sure. in this office or sure. somewhere where you're going to have an impact to change that. And, and, and by corruption, I, you don't necessarily mean J.B. McCuskey, the previous auditor, do you? No, I want, I want to continue his, his successes. Though. Okay. He's done a great job. In fact, I, I cite three examples when I'm out at these uh, dinners giving my campaign speech. In fact, the first example that I cite uh, there was a, a DHHR official that was indicted for approving over $34 million in COVID-19 payments and didn't even review a single invoice. Uh, I tell people in Berkeley County, in our hometown, there was an assistant deputy clerk that was found guilty of embezzling over $300,000 of her money. Uh, in Logan County, a volunteer fire department chief and his son was found guilty of embezzling over $55,000 of her money. And the list goes on and on and on. And just last year, 2023, the state auditor's office prosecuted $1.6 million worth of embezzlement cases in local government. And just for your listeners, I mean, that's, that's hard-earned money that they paid in taxes. So I ask people, you know, how many potholes could you have filled with that money? Uh, I did a little... Uh, little analysis. I think you could buy 5,194 big screen TVs for everybody in Tyler County with that amount of money that was embezzled. So, you know, my message to people who are stealing from the taxpayers, you know, the only TV that they're going to be watching is in the jail cell. So that's why I'm running to end fraud and corruption in West Virginia. Eric, uh, uh, you mentioned the, the Berkeley County clerk. Uh, yes. That was not found by an auditor audit. That was found mostly by, in this case, Tony Petrucci. Uh, Absolutely. How would, you, how, how would you do audits to pick up what the individual uh, did or did wrong? I'm thinking in this case Petrucci found it, not, uh, not J.B. McCoskey's office. That's right. But So let's streamline and strengthen the audit process. You know, monitor small governments. Obviously, you know, smaller governments are at risk. Berkeley County, a lot larger county, they're not a smaller government. But uh, praise God that uh, Tony Petrucci reported that. You know, once again, we have to do everything that we can to protect the taxpayers' dollars. And that's what I've done for the last 14 years as your delegate. I've been out there protecting the taxpayers, fighting for the taxpayers. And I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going a couple ideas that I have. How do I attack the fraud? Well, let's uh, let's consider maybe using a third year and fourth year math students to have them work with an intern program with the auditor's office, where they could develop AI tools to help, you know, spot anomalies that uh, that could lead to uh, fraud or corruption. Uh, Let's also maybe talk to accounting students at at higher ed that's in their third or fourth year to use them uh, to work as an intern program at the auditor's office to get experience and to also ramp up some more uh, auditing across the state. Those are some of the ideas that I have as, you know, if I'm successful in becoming your next state auditor. Uh, Eric, uh, that brings kind of a parallel chain, uh, train of thought. Uh, mm-hmm. AI is becoming so sophisticated in so many different areas. Is there an AI package available to the states that would ferret out fraud and uh, uh, in misuse? I'm not sure about that, but uh, I'm able to work, you know, like I said, if we could get some math students in there, third and fourth year math students, and, and develop a program in-house, where we don't have to spend, you know, state resources to do that. Remember, AI could be used to, you know, look over uh, a, a large volume of data instead of paying someone, you know, hours and hours and hours to do that, and just to spot any anomalies. Where we catch a lot of fraud 
in West Virginia is through the P card uh, because obviously people make unwarranted uh, purchases and that's how they get caught. I uh, think excuse me, the P card for people to understand is a credit card for the counties. Exactly, yeah, the purchasing, yes, yes, it's like a debit card. And uh, I think if all counties and uh, all cities were on that, we could, number one, you could spot fraud more uh, quickly, I think, more instantaneously. By at least going through and using AI to go through volumes and volumes of data. Remember, the next state auditor is going to be responsible for picking the next contract of the PCOR program, and we're talking over $2 billion in financial transactions. So that's why it's important to have a strong person uh, like Eric Householder as your next state auditor. So, Eric, as you've been traversing the yeah. the state and not seeing any of your opponents, have you focused in one area per, in particular? Um, obviously, you're well known here in the Eastern Panhandle. I would imagine that you, when you're running a statewide race, you don't have to work as hard. No, I shouldn't say it oh, that no. way. As <laughs> yeah. as hard at home. But um, where are you focusing your efforts? There's only six counties that I haven't been to. Hancock County, Brook County, Pocahontas, Pendleton, Mason, or Roan. Excuse me. Uh, so those six counties I haven't been able to uh, get out to. I'm hoping to try to re uh, reach out to uh, Brook County and Hancock County this week, this weekend. But uh, for the most part, I've been everywhere. I I've been talking to our citizens about, you know, the opioid settlement, you know, how our our cities and our counties, they've received a historic settlement from drug companies. And I, you know, I give them my belief that I think the money needs to go into rebuilding our communities, uh, supporting our police and fire departments, and not spend on pet projects, you know, wasting our COVID money. And I reassure them that, you know, I'm going to require cities and counties to report how the money is being spent. I'm also talking to contractors and telling them how important it is to have a strong auditor. Uh, for instance, uh, we have a lot of our smaller, small businesses, small contractors. We have state agencies that aren't paying their bills on time. That's very detrimental to the working capital of these small businesses. You know, I'm going to do everything that I can as their next state auditor to make sure that they're paid on time. Uh, I'm also talking to people about, you know, we're starting to see woke accounting and uh, that's being transcended down from the feds. Uh, you see your SEC, they're forcing companies to report uh, stuff like woke global warming or green energy or diversity stats in their financial records. You know, so I'm going to do everything I can to push back on any of the nonsense and just make sure that West Virginia sticks to uh, debits and credits on their balance sheets. You know, I talk about theft. I talk about fraud. Uh, I talk about uh, how I'm going to streamline the audit process. And then one of the things that I did this past session, I passed the bill, didn't make it across the finish line, but I talk about how there are scammers out there scamming our parents and our grandparents out of their life savings that I'm going to try to strengthen the auditor's uh, senior protection office to uh, help detect and stop these scammers. So those are the things that I want to do as your next auditor. Eric, we've, you've got to go. So the final word is yours. If there's anything else you need to communicate, now's the time. Yeah. Hey, if everyone would just make householder a household name, and I try to tell everyone, let's make, you know, I get asked this a lot. Am I a MAGA Republican? Absolutely. I want to make auditing great again. So I would appreciate your vote and support for me, Eric Householder, and uh, I'm not going to let you down. Thanks, guys. Eric, thank you very much, and I want to let you know the AC is still cranking out really well. Good deal. Good deal. Call me if you have any problems. <laughs> Will do, sir. All right. Thank See you all. Thanks. Thanks, that sir. Is, uh, Good day. Eric Householder at uh, 1025. Joe Kinzer.